How about sports? A few years ago, I volunteered to coach for my son's baseball team. There was a mandatory meeting that all coaches needed to attend before the season to pick up equipment and listen to a briefing. Our recreation department brought in a retired professional pitcher, a local boy, to give us all a pep talk. The posing that went on was incredible. Here's a bunch of balding dads with beer bellies sort of swaggering around, talking about their own baseball days, throwing out comments about pro players like they knew them personally, and spitting, I kid you not. Their attitude, that's a tame word, was so thick I needed waiters. It was the biggest bunch of posers I have ever met outside of church. That same sort of thing goes on Sunday mornings. It's just a different set of rules. Dave runs into Bob in the church lobby. Both are wearing their happy faces, though neither is happy at all. Hey Bob, how are ya? Bob is actually furious at his wife and ready to leave her, but he says, Great, just great, Dave. The Lord is good. Dave, on the other hand, hasn't believed in the goodness of God for years, ever since his daughter was killed. Yep, God is good, all the time. I'm just so glad to be here praising the Lord. Me too. Well, I'll be praying for you. I would love to see a tally of the numbers of prayers actually prayed against the number of prayers promised. I bet it's about one in a thousand. And I'll be praying for you too. Well, gotta go. You take care. Take care is our way of saying... I'm done with this conversation and I want to get out of here, but I don't want to appear rude, so I'll say something that sounds meaningful and caring. But in truth, Dave doesn't give a rip about Bob. Strength gone bad. Adam falls and all his sons with him. After that, what do you see as the story unfolds? Violent men or passive men. Strength gone bad. Cain kills Abel. Lamech threatens to kill everybody else. God finally floods the earth because of the violence of men, but it's still going on. Sometimes it gets physical, most of the time it's verbal. I know Christian men who say the most awful things to their wives, or they kill them with their silence, a cold, deadly silence. I know pastors, warm and friendly guys in the pulpit, who from the safety of their office send out blistering emails to their staff. It's cowardice, all of it. I was intrigued to read in the journals of Civil War commanders how the men you thought would be real heroes end up just the opposite. Roughs that are always ready for street fighting are cowards on the open battlefield, declared one corporal. A sergeant from the same division agreed. I don't know of a single fist-fighting Billy, but what makes... But he makes a cowardly soldier. The violence, no matter what form, is a cower up for fear. What about the achievers, the men running hard at life, pressing their way ahead? Most of it is fear-based as well. Not all of it, but most of it. For years, I was a driven type A, hard-charging perfectionist. I, dem I demanded a lot of myself and of those who worked for me. My wife didn't like to call me at work, for as she said, you have your work voice on. In other words, you're fig leaf is showing. All that swaggering and supposed confidence and hard charging came out of fear. The fear that if I did not, I would be revealed to be less than a man. Never let down, never drop your guard, give 150%. Achievers are a socially acceptable form of violent men, overdoing it in one way or another. Their casualties tend to be their marriages, their families, and their health. Until a man faces this honestly, and what's really behind it, he'll do great damage. Then there's the passive men. Abraham's a good example. He's always hiding behind his wife's skirt when the going gets rough. When he and his household are forced by a famine down to Egypt, he tells Pharaoh that Sarah is his sister so that he won't be killed. He jeopardizes her in order to save his own skin. Pharaoh takes Sarah into his harem, but the whole ruse is exposed when God strikes the Egyptians with diseases. 
You'd think Abraham would have learned his lesson, but no, he does it again years later when he moves to the Negev. In fact, his son Isaac carries on the tradition, jeopardizing Rebekah in the same way. The sins of the father passed along. Abraham is a good man, a friend of God, but he's also a coward. I know many like him, men who can't commit to the women they've been dragging along for years. Men who won't stand up to the pastor and tell him what they really think. Pastors and Christian leaders who hide behind the fig leaf of niceness and spirituality and never, ever confront a difficult situation. Guys who organize their paper clips. Men who hide behind the newspaper or the television and won't really talk to their wives or children. I'm like him too, a true son of Abraham. I mentioned that the early years of our life in the theater were good ones, but that's not the full story. I also had an affair with my work. I married my wife without ever resolving or even knowing the deeper questions of my own soul. Suddenly, the day after our wedding, I am faced with the reality that I now have this woman as my constant companion and I have no idea what it really means to love her, nor if I have whatever it is she needs from me. What if I offer her all I have as a man and it's not enough? That's a risk I was not willing to take. But I knew I had what it took at the theater, and so slowly I began to spend more and more time there. Late nights, weekends, eventually every waking moment, I was hiding, like Adam, running from the fact that my strength was being called for, and I really doubted I had any. The evidence is clear. Adam and Eve's fall sent a tremor through the human race. A fatal flaw entered the original, and it's been passed on to every son and daughter. Thus, every little boy and every little girl comes into the world set up for a loss of heart. Even, even if he can't quite put it into words, every man is haunted by the question, Am I really a man? Have I got what it takes? when it counts. What follows is the story we are personally much, much more familiar with.